and welcome to Cummins Crash Course. So in this episode, I'm going to be a little more informal. I'm not working off of a tight script, but I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the last series of videos and talk about what's going to come up next. So we've finished 20 videos. This is the 21st episode of Comics Crash Course. And I'm going to take a little bit of a break uh, for the month of August. I'm going to prepare the next set of videos, do a little traveling to see some family. And this past set of videos has been on the history of comics, at least in the U.S. And the next set of videos is going to be about the comics form, what makes comics different from other forms of art. But I guess one of the things that I wanted to address before I go on this little sabbatical is why I decided to start the series exploring comics history. So I guess another way to get at what I'm saying is, in this video I want to ask, and in some ways answer, why does comics history matter? Especially if you want to know about comics. If you're just a comics fan, if you want to know a little bit more about comics, if you want to make comics, why should you know anything about comics history? Well, first of all, if you're an artist, I should think that knowing about history of the form that you're trying to manipulate, the form that you're trying to use, is pretty important, right? I'm not saying that you can't be a good artist if you don't know about its history, but it's always useful to know about the history of the form that you're trying to make to know where certain movements come from, to know artists that have worked before you, how those artists came to determine certain techniques, how certain artists and movements are responding to certain movements before them. You know, these things are just useful to know. But that rolls into a bigger point why I think history matters a lot. And that's, history gives us context. We didn't get to where we are now in comics out of the blue. Comics artists, comics writers, comics creators, comics publishers, the comics industry, it exists in context. Uh, a social context, an economic context, and a historical context. And those contexts are responding to previous moments. And in order to better understand them, well, it helps to know what happened before, and then what happened before that, and then what happened before that. And so if you want to really kind of understand what's happening now around you, well, you kind of have to understand what's happening before. And one of the things about comics is it's, you know, there's a lot of fans, there's a lot of stories, there's a lot of mythologies, and some of those mythologies aren't true. For example, I take a long time in the several videos I did about the war on comics in the 1950s to break down some of the myths about what happened with the comics code. You know, maybe it wasn't all Frederick Wortham's fault. After all those videos, you might still hate Frederick Wortham. That's totally fair, but there was a whole lot else going on, and he was only one guy in a big movement that was happening. Uh, but, you know, in a lot of kind of fan stories of what happened in the 1950s, you'd think that Frederick Wortham was pretty much the only guy involved. So, knowing about history helps you have a better and fuller understanding of how we got to where we are today. So that's one reason that I think comics history is important. A second reason I think comics history is important, and I think this is true of any art form, is that, look, we don't have the ability to time travel. Alas, the Doctor is not real. And so the only way that we can really kind of get a glimpse into other cultures that we can't visit, and particularly other time periods because we really can't visit the past, is to examine the remnants of their cultures that we have. So, sure, you could talk to maybe your grandma who was alive in the 1920s, um, but, you know, her vision of the 1920s is now a little bit shaded by her having lived um, from the 1920s until today. But we can look at a piece of culture that was published in the 1920s, and with perhaps some careful understanding of the time period and reading around what might have happened in that time period, get a sense of what people in the 1920s might have been thinking about, might have been caring about, might have been worried about, might have been afraid of, might have liked, and it can maybe be as close as we can ever get to a sense of what life was like for people in a different time period. And that's really cool. And, you know, the world is crazy right now. I mean, it always feels kind of crazy, but I know for a lot of people, it feels like everything's kind of on fire and everything's crazy and everything's moving so fast. Um, but one of the things that happens, at least for me, when you go and study history, is that you find out that people have always felt like the world is going crazy and everything's moving too fast and people are just mad and everybody hates each other and can't figure out how to solve these differences. And so it's really fascinating to find out the ways in which, in some sense or another, humans have always been pretty human. And you can see that through these kind of cultural remnants that we have. 
uh, comics being one of them. So that's two ways uh, in which I think comics and comics history matters. So sort of tying into that is, I think, this notion that we often have. Um, one of the fancy words for it is uh, this teleological vision of history. So teleological is a, is a sort of fancy theory word that means that we are moving through history, um, constantly progressing towards some sort of ultimate end point, right? In which, you know, we reach nirvana or that we're ultimately always getting better and there's going to be some sort of end point, right? The idea is that, well, we're just better now than we were back then. We understand more than we did back then. Um, we figured out more about humanity. We figured out more about the world. And well, you know, sure, maybe we have better telescopes and technically we can see further. Um, there are a lot of ways in which when you look back at, again, these remnants of culture that we have from previous decades, and comics is one of them, you actually see the complicated ways in which people understood the world. And well, you know, they might have understood it slightly differently, I don't necessarily think it's fair to say we understand the world and the ways of the world better now than we have in the past. Take George Harriman for an example and Crazy Cat. This strip from 1919 examines gender and race in massively complicated ways. Um, ways in which I think are still shocking, are still complex are still challenging for a modern reader. And we tend to think that we're like way enlightened and we understand things way better than we did in the 1920s. But this black and white comic strip, newspaper strip, not even a graphic novel, a newspaper strip from the 1919 was doing things with gender and race and language that are still shocking. And it wasn't like he was some lone genius that nobody understood. He was printed in daily newspapers uh, and people read him. So we can find out the ways in which, again, humans have always been human. We've been thinking about the problems that we think about. People have felt things about gender, about sexuality, about identity. They've struggled with race. They've thought about history and politics. Um, throughout time, and maybe they've thought about it differently, and maybe they've articulated it differently. And we see these in culture, and one of the forms of culture is comics. And what I find interesting about comics, and one of the things that we'll get into about comics in this next series, is that comics gives us this insight in both verbal form and visual form. So we get to see both how people thought about these ideas in language, and how they thought through these ideas in images. And so for me, it's a sort of doubly fascinating form to think about all of these kind of cultural, time, history, context things uh, throughout history. And as hopefully this history series has shown you, that history goes back a pretty long ways. So that's the reason that I started with history. Uh, on the one hand, it's a great story. On the other hand, it really gives us insight into culture and gives us a sense of um, how humans have been interacting with this really fascinating form for a really long time. I hope you've enjoyed this first series and I'd like to thank you all because today I just hit a hundred subscribers which you know I watch plenty of YouTube I know people hit a million or whatever but a hundred come on for a little comics education YouTube channel, that's pretty spectacular. So thank you all for that. I look forward to coming back uh, with our next series on the comics form and how comics work in September after my little summer vacation. I'll see you all then. Bye. I hope you've been enjoying Comics Crash Course. If you'd like to help us out, I encourage you to click like, to tell your friends to check out our channel, and as always, to hit subscribe.